Hello, my name is James Durheim, and I'm the owner of European Focus. My job today is to take you on a walking tour through Grützigen, the town of your ancestry, in the hopes that you will understand a little bit more of where you came from. We're walking underneath a historic bridge from 1706, saved from being blown up in World War II by the actions of two brave local men. And when we look to the left, we see a castle built in the 1500s. This castle would have been the residence and office of the Markgraf, who ruled uh, this area. Grützigen was first mentioned in a document way back in the year 961. The town is on the uh, ancient Roman road through the Finstal, or Valley of the Finns River. And in an inventory in the 11th century, there were four mills, four vineyards, five chapels, and 27 farms. And this area belonged for centuries to a monastery called Weisenberg in the Alsace region of France. Today there's just one church and no mills have survived the ravages of time, progress, and the Second World War, which unfortunately destroyed about 25% of the town. The church was built as a Roman Catholic church and converted to Protestant in the 1500s. It was also enlarged uh, in the 1400s to its present shape, which is quite large for a town this size. But remember that back in the 1400s, everyone went to church. This crucifix is a work of art dating from about 1500, so it would have been there in the Catholic time. And we're looking up uh, at the ceiling of the choir, which is the oldest section of the church from 1225. And it has some beautiful paintings that were uncovered actually by accident during a renovation process in the 1970s. And that wall is about three feet thick. Of the five chapels scattered around the different sections of town, there was one called the Holy Cross Chapel, and that was standing where this church is today. The church occupies the highest point in the town, which makes sense from a uh, defensive position mainly, because uh, if you could be up high, you could see where your enemy was coming from and you could shoot at them and the archers would shoot at them through these slits in the tower. There you can clearly see the enlargement of the church with the choir on the left, the original width of the church, and then the enlargement and the widening of the church to its present dimensions in the early 1400s. As I walk along the north flank of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, and up at the Belfry with the World War I Memorial and the memorial to the Franco-Prussian War dead, including two men with the name of Height who fell in the year 1870. Grützigen has been an artist community since 1890, and this is the founder of that colony. As I make my way along a well-marked historic trail with some nice etchings and pictures of buildings that were lost, unfortunately, to the August 1944 bombing. And we're making our way toward the Market Square in the present heart of Grützigen. This is the river that flows through the valley. Very important source of water and power for those four mills I mentioned. This region has some sandstone quarries that were uh, producing sandstone for buildings all over the area. At one time Grützigen was sort of known for its beautiful sandstone 
buildings, doorways, lintels. This is a Renaissance era building destroyed in the war, but they saved the portal. I'm now walking through an open green space toward the Markt Platz or Market Square. Ahead of me is the historic town hall, a wonderful Fachwerk or half timbered building from 1668. On the side of the town hall are some iron reflector plates that would have been on the side of a stove a few hundred years ago. The beautiful oak timber work of the town hall, the geraniums in full bloom. Beside the town hall, a well from about the same period. And on display, an old photograph of the way the town hall looked about a hundred years ago before they exposed all the timbers and today. Walking around Grutzigen, uh, you can find several examples of buildings that were at least 200 years old. This is a fine example of a farmhouse, Fachwerk or half timbered style. And a view up the street. Home of a baker. Speaking of bakers, it's about time for lunch. So a friend of I, a friend of mine that I've brought on the trip today, we're going to step into the local bakery and have some sandwiches made for us. That's cheesecake. Some other nice treats. These are brochen made from Dinkel. That's a grain found in this rare, in this area. That's the incredible sandwich that she made for me, more than I expected. And a farmyard just behind the bakery. This is a stone support from 1770. It would have held up the end of an oven. Old watering trough in the farmyard. Another view of the town hall walking back into the marketplace. and a stone sculpture about uh, one of the trades found in this region. Next to that sculpture you see a tall uh, pole with some nice shields on it uh, showing all the handiwork and craftsmanship found in Grutzigen and the area. And a reminder of the horrors of National Socialism, the Nazi era, 1933 to 1945, the victims of that terrible time in German history with names of the Jewish citizens who were taken away never to be seen again. Now a walk along the back streets of Gritzigen. Eyes open for Houses that would have been standing a couple hundred years ago or more. Some examples of some of the artistry that you find here and there with different studios. That's a bold color for a house in Germany, which is mostly pretty toned down as far as colors are concerned. This was the school. It was uh, destroyed in 1944 typical farm. In Germany, the farmers live in the town and then they commute out into their fields each day to do their work, but they keep their animals and all their equipment in town behind these big doors, which open wide enough for any wagon to go through and horses with a smaller door on the side for people access. Some more uh, reminders of what was lost in 1944 and 
in this lovely little square, the memorial to the Franco-Prussian War. Some houses across the way, and some pictures coming up of what this square looked like before 1944. There's a war memorial I just showed you. There it is again with people uh, attending a market day celebration. The home of a baker with the uh, crest. Nice barn. And probably a business that had something to do with uh, milk delivery because the door and the windows are very high. So I can imagine a wagon pulling up with fresh milk and delivering that for the production of cheese or whatever. This is a farm from 1496 and I know that because it's now our restaurant called 1496. Beautiful property on the north edge of the downtown. In this part of Germany and uh, elsewhere, in stretching down into the Alsace, for example, you see many farms with a larger house and then a gate and then a smaller house beside the gate. This was a multi-generational home for the family with the kids. They'd be in the bigger house. And then the grandma, grandpa would be living in the house across the yard. So they would take care of the older generation. And as they became old themselves and the kids grew up and had their own families, then they would move across the yard. Makes total sense, and I'm going to show you a fine example of this type of house coming up now. So the uh, larger house is behind the ivy there. It's right there on the right. There's the arch. There's a gate, farmyard, and barn in the back. And there's the smaller house for Grandma and Grandpa. And again, the smaller house for Grandma and Grandpa on the left, and the larger house on the right. Across the street, a preserved uh, doorway from 1619 from a house that was uh, lost in the war. And as I make my way back to the church, some views of some of the older houses in the center of Grutzigen. I hope you've enjoyed this walk through your ancestral town. It's been my pleasure to bring it to you. Be sure to watch to the very end because there's a little surprise for you as we take a look at the old wash house and mill near the Fence River. Thank you. I wish you all Fiederzane. Goodbye.